Hi, um, my name is Dr. Vicki Mayer and I'm a professor in the Department of Communication and I'm here today to talk to all of you about Medianola, which is a service project that is listed through Tulane's uh, Center for Public Service. Uh, it's been around for about four years and I have the pleasure of uh, introducing you and bringing you into hopefully the Medianola family, uh, the huge group of researchers, authors, and users who have been using Medianola. So um, I'm going to present uh, a little bit about who we are, where we came from, what we do, um, what kinds of uh, things you can expect as part of your service experience. And then I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about our website. And this will help prepare you for training on the project that you will actually do with Medianola later in your class. Um, if you have any questions about anything, uh, you can uh, review this orientation online or you can email me at vmayer at tulane.edu. So to start, what is Medianola? Uh, Medianola is both a destination website, but it's also a participatory tool. It's a tool that allows for the interactive researching and telling of New Orleans cultural histories. And I, I say histories because um, there's so many different aspects to culture that we could think about in terms of New Orleans. We could think about the food, we could think about individual kinds of food, the, the baking and the coffee and the, um, the gumbo and all of these different things. But we could also think about music, the arts, we can think about uh, just your everyday going down to make groceries or catching the streetcar. Um, Medianola is a way that gets as many people actively involved in telling and retelling stories about New Orleans history based on real empirical research. Now a lot of people get confused about what the media in Medianola stands for. Media is actually the Latin word for through. And so if you think about it, it's through all these people, places, and things within New Orleans that make up a culture. So we use culture in the widest, most um, diverse and uh, uh, broad sense in order to think about how you know, New Orleans wouldn't have its unique and individual culture if it wasn't for all of these things that are ordinary, uh, things that people take for granted, things that people are every day. So we're used to talking about New Orleans culture as if it's extraordinary. Here, we're trying to, to get behind the extraordinary and not just focus on the few uh, original geniuses who uh, created jazz or the few um, standout chefs, but really get behind the scenes and think about how everyday people contribute to making what we uh, know and many of us love as New Orleans culture. And really the, um, the, the, the history of this uh, project dates back to the post-Katrina moment when uh, you know we lost a lot of our archives, particularly here at Tulane campus, the Howard Tilton Library, the basement filled with water. Um, we're still in the process of trying to recover some of those original documents and preserve uh, what, what has been recovered. Um, a lot of the people, and if you think about an everyday uh, cultural history, you don't always find it in a library, right? You find it on the street. You find it, uh, the person that you talk to and 
at the bus stop who tells you a story about uh, the grandfather or the great grandfather. Um, you know, ordinary culture is alive. It's in a process. Um, it, much of it is oral history. And after Katrina, so many people who are the bearers of that cultural history left um, that I, I just got to thinking, I, I come from a background in community media. What, what can we do here at Tulane University to ensure that, God forbid, anything like this were to ever happen again, we would have records those stories that people tell about what their families did in the city, the contributions they made to the things that we now hold up as unique and, um, and ascribe sometimes to individuals, how they come from these, these places that where people come together, where creativity happens, um, sometimes accidentally, but through the repetition of these everyday things. So, so Media Nola is really, um, it's meant to be a very open site. It's a site where uh, we're not interested necessarily in telling the truth, right? A one singular monolithic history, but we're interested in providing our users with many, many different perspectives on history. Um, and those perspectives can include people's oral memories. They can include, um, you know, newspapers. They can include uh, official documentation. Um, all sorts of ways. There's so many different ways to tell history. Um, and so Media Nola really um, is so interdisciplinary because it brings together all of these different senses of the ways that stories and history come together. And I think it's through that, that melange, that mosaic, that we actually have a chance of preserving the, the sense of New Orleans histories that will, will go on, um, that, that really people carry, will carry with them in their memories, and hopefully um, will amplify people's understandings of what this culture is all about. Um, we are, uh, even though I say this, that we're not interested in truth, in fact, we have been approached uh, by Wikipedia, we've been approached by the Louisiana Endowment for the Humanities, we are the preeminent um, site for this broad array of histories that can be verified. We are, I'd like to say, we are more verifiable than Wikipedia. Everything that goes into the system can be traced to interviews done in the community, to archival research, to city directories, um, to images, photographs. So everything um, that goes into this system, it's very important that we have enough uh, respect for New Orleans culture and the people and, and materials that are telling us about New Orleans culture, that everything that goes into the system gets named. And that includes you as an author, as a researcher, and as someone who's putting into this system. So just to, just to uh, review a little bit of that, um, what we're interested in is a multi-layered sense of history, one that gives people a holistic sense of the culture. And while everything is to be cited and sourced, we're interested in multiple, multi-voicedness, right? The idea that there are many voices uh, participating in this site. And through that, then, users, we want them to discover three things. One, that there are the, the contributions of everyday people and places and things to the production of New Orleans culture. Two, that cultural, culture exists throughout the city. It's not just located in the French Quarter. It's not just located in, in a particular place. It's throughout the city. Um, you may be researching 
parts of the city that you didn't even know coming into this class existed, but are part of Orleans, Jefferson, and the larger Gulf, uh, Gulf South region. And three, we want users to understand that there are a variety of different kinds of ways of telling the same story. That is that if you're talking about uh, the history of a second line, there are, depending on who you talk to and what sources you use, there are many different ways to tell that story. And they're all equally valid. Um, so long as they're sourced, we're going to take those as, as valid and let uh, users decide how they want to use that information. So, a um, little bit more about our history. So in 2008, after Katrina, um, given the situation of the city, I thought to myself, let's, let's get together, let's do a pilot project. We started the very first class in uh, the, the uh, it was the spring of 09, it was a media histories class in communication, and students uh, went to the archives and they did the first, uh, the first entries, the first uh, entries into Media NOLA, and they looked very much like Wikipedia. We still have that site up, it's at medianola.tulane.edu. You can see what the earliest iterations of Media NOLA looked like. From there, we started growing. We started adding more classes, more kinds of students, different kinds of disciplines. In 2010, we won recognition by the National Endowment of the Humanities as an official digital humanities uh, startup project um, that allowed uh, us to get together a big cohort of collaborators on this project. This project uh, brings together not only Tulane faculty and students, but all of the archivists and librarians around uh, the city of New Orleans. Um, not just at Tulane, but at UNO, with the state, at Historic New Orleans Collection downtown, with the New Orleans Public Library. We also have collaborations uh, with different community organizations that are also interested in telling uh, neighborhood stories, digital storytelling, um, uh, you know, pres preservation in general. Um, we work with the New Orleans Video Access Center uh, quite closely, which has a huge um, trove of historic uh, materials dating back to the early 1970s, um, community produced video and media. And so we work closely with them to try to preserve their uh, materials and try to get them onto the web for public access um, and research. Um, we work, and then finally, we work with um, large groups of people in the community been in New Orleans any amount of time, you'll find that residents, longtime residents, care a lot about the telling of history. This is a city where people really do care about the stories, the way that New Orleans is um, perceived, not just from the outside, but also from within the city. And different uh, people have different um, ways of investing in that, uh, the telling of cultural stories about their families, their neighborhoods, um, their practices. We work with a lot of practitioners who tell us about um, the history of the kinds of things they do, whether it's um, working with iron, to working on a ship, to um, working in a restaurant. So this, these are all people who are considered part of the Media Nola family. They're collaborators. We also work very closely with the Tulane Law School. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this, but uh, part of what you're gonna be doing, um, we're very interested that people use our site and use it um, you know, as much as they want. Um, uh, we have a Creative Commons license, which allows for open access and, and citation of this work. 
Um, but we also want to make sure that we don't steal anyone else's intellectual property and that, you know, there's so many ways in which, you know, if you've seen documentaries about New Orleans or you see news crews coming in and they don't ask permission and they take images, um, that, that doesn't show a lot of respect to the culture. And so we want to be very, very respectful of what people say and what they, what they own as part of their own uh, property and culture, not just legally, but also um, emotionally. So we work very closely with the law school in thinking about the best ways to provide public access without anyone feeling um, exploited or stepping on anyone's legal rights. So these are all people that, you know, through the NEH grant and the NEH planning process, we, um, we've been meeting We've uh, come up with, uh, we've done many different kind of outreach programs to try to get the word out, to make our partnerships. Your class may have an outside community partner, um, may be working in the archives, may be working with the law school. All of these are possibilities with Media NOLA. And depending on whether you're an intern or with a class, all of these different, um, you know, the, the, the collaborators that you see may be different from the larger community which uh, works on and uses this site. So you always have to keep that in mind. Um, in 2011, we became an official partner with the Center for Public Service. Um, this allows you know, students uh, can work with us directly as a service partner, even though we may have different collab uh, collaboratives for different kinds of projects. 2012, big year. This uh, summer of 2012, we've launched brand new beta site for Media NOLA, breaking, we still have a Wikipedia-like um, uh, format and Wikipedia-like presence in terms of our authority in telling stories, but we have our total, a totally new look. Uh, we uh, hope that through this site we can do a lot of creative new things. We're adding to it all the time. We've started a pilot project to do uh, uh, mobile tours that are downloadable through a phone app. Uh, we've just started that in collaboration with UNO. That site is called New Orleans Historical and is linked to Media NOLA. We've also collaborated with the Music Rising Project through the Center for Gulf South Studies and are contributing content to their Music Rising website to talk about musical cultures in the Gulf South. And uh, we also uh, are starting all sorts of creative projects through the Colette uh, Media Internship Program. We have students not just doing uh, uh, phone app tours, but also doing video games, also um, designing uh, how-to materials for the website. So, so all of this is going on at the same time. And that's, that's really our history, that in four years, we've gone from, gosh, you know, something needs to be done about this, to really, um, a very extensive network um, that's all interconnected, and that you'll get to be a, um, to play a role of and be a, uh, have a piece of. So, so what does that mean? Um, what does that mean being a piece of Media Nola? Let me let me take a second to just give you a sense of what are some of the expectations as a, a ser service learning uh, worker for Media Nola. A lot of media NOLA, uh, the advantages are you can do it on your own time, by and large. It's very flexible. The fact that it's a website means that if you have a computer and access to the internet at home, a lot of the input can be done when you have time in the comfort of your own bedroom or dorm room. The danger, of course, in that is that you have to make your own schedule. And there's a lot of coordination that goes on with this project. Um, you know, I'm the director and I have uh, 
just for one semester, um, you know, over 100 students will be working with Media NOLA. So that's a lot of coordination. And so well, the primary expectation is that when you sign up to do something, you come up with a schedule and you follow that schedule. And that means that uh, you have to have uh, particular deadline dates and you have to meet those. And if you don't, uh, you know, there's not, there's not a lot uh, that, that, that can be done because some other group might be waiting on some input that you're putting in, right? There might be a mobile phone tour that's waiting for your entry to upload to the mobile phone. So if you're, if you're not able to make your deadlines um, that you set yourself, this may not uh, be the project for you. The second expectation is that Media NOLA, even though a lot of this stuff can be done from the comfort of your home, there will be opportunities, depending on the project, to go into different kinds of community spaces. You may be going into a library archive. You may be going to a nonprofit organization and talking to people and, and uh, witnessing what people do at that organization. You may be going into uh, uh, be doing a little bit of field work or ethnography and maybe going into a music club or into a restaurant, a place where people work and there are people who are paying to uh, participate in the cultural experience that they are having. Um, all of these spaces have rules. And when you go into those spaces, you are representing both Media NOLA and this larger community organization, and you're representing Tulane University as Tulane students. So it's really important that wherever you're going to go, that you be prepared, and there will be a training sessions. Wherever you go, if you're going to archives, there'll be a training session uh, in the archive. If you're going to uh, a community organization, there'll be a training session for that. But you need to be prepared and make sure that you know the rules of that space and know that you're not just representing you yourself individually. And believe me, that if you follow the rules, the people that you meet will be um, much more able to assist you in helping you put together your project to upload to Media NOLA, right? So that means that when you go to places, you need to have respect both for the materials. If you're in an archive, you may have to make sure that you, um, you know, don't have your phone on, bring a pencil and not a pen, um, have enough battery in your laptop to be able to take notes. Um, respect for the old materials. If you're going through scrapbooks, um, the pages are quite fragile and you have to respect those materials um, or the archivist will throw you out. Um, and if that happens, you're not going to be able to get your project done. Similarly, if you're in a community space that's public, you have to remember these are places of work. You have to ask people permission before entering their spaces. You have to ask permissions before uh, recording. Um, let people know if you're doing an oral history. What are your questions that you're going to be asking? We'll go through this in training, but I just want to stress that this is these are kind of baselines for what you need to think about in signing on to a project, scheduling that project, and then getting to know that space. These are all three part of the same uh, thing. And then that last part in terms of having respect will also go along with the legal aspects. Um, wherever you go, you'll have to think about, do I have permission? Do I have the appropriate uh, permission forms? Um, so it's both a question of you know, respecting people's dignity, but it's also a legal aspect of making sure that you have the appropriate forms and materials before you go out into the field. And the field really for Media NOLA, since it's through, it's through all of these people, places, and things. So you really have to think about that all the time. 
So um, now I want to show you the actual website. Capabilities, uh, this will change. But part of um, being part of the Media NOLA group is being understanding and flexible that uh, technology is always a work in progress. As I like to say, um, I live in beta in some ways because we're always in the process of changing. So here you have the, uh, the main website. It's the address is medianola.org so that's very easy to remember and you can uh, you may find it on your blackboard site or you may want to bookmark that we have a timeline that can be dragged ranging from 1800 to 2020 obviously going through the future we have a map of the city this map can be zoomed out or brought back in and we have categories either to search by keyword now these categories are in a process of becoming but they're basically different kinds of media culture performances um, print culture and so they, they're going to be moved around a bit and within each uh, category there are subcategories and then the nice thing about media nola is they're ever expandable so if you're somebody and you're working on uh, bakers we can add bakers if you're working on uh, bakers of king cakes we can make a sub sub heading uh, section for that so basically these are ever expandable and then we have a kind of section that, that down here um, that gives you a sense of lots of different uh, kinds of culture um, and these are all uh, ones that have uh, either links to uh, entries or maybe just uh, map points that need entries filled in for them. And here you can see, you know, uh, when we do have uh, permission for a, a, a site, we, we, for an image, we put it up here as the main image. Let me give you a sense of how this all works. Um, let's say I was interested in media distribution sites. And that would be anywhere that we see culture being distributed. Um, bookstores, newsstands, music stores, radio stations, television stations, video rental stores. And we can click on this, and here we go. We have lots of different sites. Let's see if I can zoom in a little here. And when you click on a site, well, first of all, your results and we're playing with the scale of the map, but the results tell you a little bit about where there are concentrations of different kinds of cultural production. So here we see one concentration in the, in the CBD um, and the French Quarter, and that makes sense because 
indeed, um, when you're talking about television and radio, a lot of it is um, historically has been located in the central business district. So here then, each site, um, this is for WDSU, which is a television station. Uh, for two years, it was housed at 812 Gravier Street. It has a picture here. And then we can view that page. And so some of you may be just simply involved in the process of locating places, people, and things in the map. Um, the more people, places, and things we have, the easier it's going to be for people to make comparisons. Um, you know, where did people live versus where did people work on a particular cultural item? Or where do second lines pass in the city? So um, some of you may be simply involved in the geographic process of mapping. Many of you, though, will be in involved in the research aspect and so this is a, a history, a story, if you will, about the, uh, the station. We had an intro paragraph. Here to the left, we have a table of contents. We have a list. Um, so we have one, two, three, uh, five, six people have written and rewritten this story. So this is a particularly rich history. And then we have the different segments. And if you'll notice, every single one of these facts, and that's why I'm saying we're better than Wikipedia, connects to verifiable sources. And many of you will learn in your training how, how to do this. How do you create sections? How do you uh, cite uh, the works? Um, we use uh, Chicago style for our citations. How do I put in another citation? So, so this is all things you will learn. But this is basically all of the histories have these elements. Where they are, images, and a story with citations. Um, authorship is really important. If you'll notice in Wikipedia, authors aren't listed. But here, since you'll be authors of stories, you'll actually have a contributor byline. And so you can cite this as a publication and use it to, um, as part of your own uh, resume and showing the kinds of uh, work that you've uh, done, um, uh, the kind of publication work you've done in college, part of your college experience. So, Here we had the home page, the discover pages, which are the list of different um, sites. So for example, music clubs. You can look at different music clubs that we have. Um, we have many more of this. This is just a selection. Um, but then you can also uh, click on any of these and get the history of them. Uh, this is the Blue Room, which was a, um, a nightclub located within the Roosevelt Hotel. Um, it's, it's actually been reconstructed, and you can actually go there now and see the way the Blue Room used to look. And then we have the journal page. And this is for those of you who will be doing field work. So for example, right now we just have some samples up there. Um, but this is a place where you could do a photo blog history um, and write up your personal experiences of particular events um, as they happen in New Orleans or particular experiences that you have. Um, the official discover entries these are always in the process of becoming, um, as somebody adds another layer to this, they'll add their contributor name and the official history, right? The historic, it could be added to, it could be changed, it could be edited. On the, edit, on the journal site, however, these are meant not to be 
uh, etiquette. These are meant to be your personal um, field experiences of a place or site. So depending on the project you're doing, you may be entering some uh, verifiable information into the discover pages, and then some things that are just your own subjective point of view about what you're seeing. Finally, um, we have, and I should say that, that you know, coming online, we're going to have more images, more video, uh, audio interviews. Um, because we're in beta right now, or we're just started um, our new site, we haven't gotten the permissions to upload a lot of the information yet. But as that happens, um, more things will be coming online dramatically. And then finally, the about pages. And what um, we're going to see in the next couple of weeks are how-to manuals. Um, you know, how to do an oral interview. How to do, upload a, a GIS site uh, to the map. How to do archival research and what are the different uh, uh, archives around the city, what are their hours, how do you get to them by bus, where do you park, right? So all of the information, you'll have trainings, but all of that information will also be on the About site um, so that you can, uh, uh, you know, be mindful and be prepared every time you do something for Media NOLA. And so this is uh, uh, a uh, many of these um, how-tos were written by students who have been through the process. They too are always in the process of becoming, and so uh, part of Medianola's uh, reflective process is to actually reflect on what works in the project, how to make that process better, and then for you to contribute to the how-to manuals so you can pass on that knowledge to the next generation. So as you can see, um, there are certain parts of the service project that may be uh, geared specifically to your class, specifically to your year level, whether you're a freshman or a senior, or specifically to the amount of hours or kind of experience you're gonna have, whether it says a uh, video game designer, um, or um, you know somebody who goes through city directories to help us locate some of these hard to find places and people. So um, those things are unique to your experience, but then there's some things that everybody will experience. Um, the reflective process and passing on knowledge and getting out the word about Medianola is something that all of you will do and will be evidenced on this site. And so I really invite you um, as the final part of this orientation, uh, get to a computer, bring out your laptop, get a tablet, pad, iPad, whatever, even your phone, and start exploring Media NOLA and then reflect upon what, who, how can we make this site better? Who are the users that you can imagine? And how do you see yourself as being a great contributor to this really uh, participatory project of preservation and history? So thank you very much, and I hope to talk with you soon.